Hey guys. This is what if Naruto is hiding her identity, and secretly a girl. It all started with a smell. That had been what made Shikamaru take notice of Naruto. Some things about the boy just didn't add up, and the more Shikamaru thought about it, the more he began to wonder what Naruto wasn't telling people. And if Shikamaru was correct, why was Naruto hiding it in the first place? The genius just hoped he was right, otherwise things could get awkward. Hit like and subscribe if you like this one, and also please check the author in the description. Let's start. We are pain, that's all. We are God. <laughs> Chapter 1. Something's not quite right. There was something not quite right about him. The problem was the dark-haired boy had trouble working out what it was. He had always felt that there was something off, but he couldn't put his finger on it. As they got older, the feeling only got worse. It had started when Iruka sensei had made them sit next to each other in detention. There had been this smell. He had sniffed, wondering where it was coming from. It was light, but natural, human but not male, and there were only three people in the room, all males. He had found that the source of the smell was the boy sitting next to him. Unfortunately said boy had noticed. Shikamaru, what the hell are you doing? Are you sniffing me? The boy moved back, nearly falling out of his chair, his face scrunched into a frown. He fought a blush at the blonde's words. No, he protested in a huff. I was wondering where that smell was coming from. Confusion filled blue eyes before the blonde sniffed, then pulled his jacket up to his nose and inhaled deeply. I don't smell anything. Naruto, Shikamaru, barked Iraka sensei No talking. The blonde's reply confused Shikamaru, seeing as if the smell was unusual for Naruto to give off, he would have commented, even if it was simply a change in laundry powder or soap. However, it seemed as though Naruto found the somewhat girly smell he gave off as normal. Shikamaru pondered this some more as he put his head down into his crossed arms, trying to go to sleep on the desk. All thoughts were banished from his mind, however, when something hit him on the top of his head. No sleeping in class. What a drag! Shikamaru muttered, sitting up with a lazy yawn. Naruto put a hand over his mouth, trying to stifle the giggle that escaped his mouth, making Shikamaru raise his eyebrow in surprise. It wasn't often he heard boys giggle. Most boys did their best not to giggle, since it was seen as a girly action. The blonde didn't seem to care though, as he discreetly pointed at Shikamaru, who rolled his eyes, thinking that the situation couldn't be that funny until he saw that Iruka sensei was also smiling in amusement. Naruto decided to take him out of his misery by reaching out, only to have Shikamaru cringe. The other boy didn't seem to notice though, and Shikamaru wasn't even sure why he was so uncomfortable all of a sudden. Close your eyes. The blonde brushed his fingers over the top of Shikamaru's head, making the dark-haired boy shudder at the gentle touch. He had never realized how small and soft Naruto's hands were before, even under all the calluses from training. When the boy had stopped, Shikamaru opened his eyes to find the table and his lap covered in white flakes, flakes he quickly realized that were made of chalk dust, left over from the blackboard eraser that Iruka sensei had thrown at him. Thanks, he muttered, his throat constricting around the word as he watched Naruto smack his hands together, getting rid of the chalk. The hands really were small and slender, covered in smooth, soft but hard skin, a combination he thought impossible. You're welcome. Naruto closed his eyes, smiling widely and putting his hands behind his head. Hey, Iruka sensei can we go? Iruka sensei looked at the clock before sighing. He knew that both Naruto and Shikamaru were going to score low on their next test, no matter how long he kept them. He nodded. Fine, but study for the next test. His words were hollow. I do, Naruto muttered glumly before Shikamaru ran from the room, showing more energy than he ever had. He didn't know why, but the blonde had shaken him, making him uncomfortable. There was something not right about Naruto, but Shikamaru couldn't quite work it out. The only conclusion he could reach was that Naruto was actually a girl, which was ridiculous. Naruto acted and looked like a boy, even if his features were softer than most boys, with a curved jawline, rounded eyes, and fuller lips. 
there was still no way that Naruto was a girl. The thought plagued Shikamaru all throughout his academic life. By the time he graduated he was beginning to hope that Naruto was actually a girl, like the signs pointed to. The little things that made him believe that the blonde was female were intriguing to him, and even other things, like Naruto's ambitious personality, his humor and especially the way that Shikamaru couldn't predict his behavior made Naruto draw Shikamaru's eye without even trying. The dark-haired boy had always liked people watching, almost as much as he liked Cloud watching and Naruto had became his favorite person to watch. He told himself it was because there were so many questions surrounding the blonde. The biggest question was if he was really a she, why was she hiding her gender? It was through his time observing Naruto that he realized something important that many had overlooked. He had discovered the secret four months into observing Naruto, and was impressed with how well the other boy hid it. Once he realized though, he had to decide what to do about the information since he knew it could not go unchanged. The whole day after he figured it out, he debated what to do, before coming to the conclusion that he had to talk to Irika sensei only in private, for Naruto's own sake. As class drew to a close Shikamaru was happy that no one had received detention, making them stay late. It was one of the first times that had happened. After waiting for the class to empty, Shikamaru slowly walked down to the front of the classroom, where his sensei stood wiping the blackboard clean. Iruka sensei, he said once he had stopped in front of the desk, his hands in his pockets, and trying to look bored. Truthfully, he was worried about how his teacher was going to react, and what would happen to Naruto. He had a feeling the blonde didn't keep the information to himself out of pride alone, but out of fear of what would happen to him. The chunin turned, his dark, kind eyes locking onto Shikamaru's, noticing the tension in the boy's shoulders, even as he tried to hide it. The encouraging smile the sensei gave calmed him, and reminded him that even though Iruka sensei acted mean at times he cared, especially for Naruto, though he would never admit he favored the blonde like his own son, or brother. Is there something you need, Shikamaru? Iruka sensei asked, moving away from the board and around the desk. The black-haired boy looked at the ground, going back over the information in his head to make sure he was correct before opening his mouth. It's about Naruto. Iruka sensei groaned, dropping his head into his hand. What did he do this time? I swear if it's anything like the tuna incident then I'm going to give him detention for the next month. No, Shikamaru yelped, waving his hands around as though he was wiping the words out of the air. He didn't do anything. I just realized something today about him. Oh. This seemed to pique the man's interest. And what is that? Well, I noticed that his always frowning at the board. At first I thought it was because he was confused. But normally, people would write down the information so they can study it later and understand it. Or they will ask questions. But he doesn't take notes. What is more, is that he gets frustrated with simply writing tasks. He said after our detention for our test results that he does study. Yet his marks are horrible. Irika sensei frowned in confusion. You're not here to make fun of him, are you? If so, I think I should remind you that your scores aren't much better. No, Shikamaru sighed, his shoulders slumped. I'm trying to say that I think Naruto is illiterate. The confession seemed to stun the older male for a moment before he chuckled uncertainly. No, he couldn't be, I would notice, he paused. I mean, I must have asked him to read out loud, surely. He couldn't have gotten into the academy if he couldn't read. You have asked him to read stuff out, but he always asks where we are up to and annoys you so you ask someone else, and it's not far-fetched that he can't read. Children here tend to first learn how to read from their parents and become more proficient with it through school, but Naruto doesn't have any parents, and I don't know if Naruto had anyone to teach him. He noticed a far away. Horrified look on Iruka sensei's face as he realized that Shikamaru may have been right, meaning he had not realized how much one of his students was struggling. I'll talk to him, but please don't tell anyone, some people are already unhappy Naruto is in the academy, because he's a prankster. Choosing not to point out that he knew Iruka sensei lied, though he didn't know why, Shikamaru instead nodded, his hands back in his pockets. Well, good luck with that, I'm going to go watch the clouds. Iruka sensei found Naruto sitting on the fourth Hokage's head, looking up at the sky and taking deep, measured breaths. The ninja recognized what the blonde was doing, 
seeing as he had found Naruto doing it multiple times. He was hungry but either the villagers wouldn't take his money, or he had none. It was no secret to Iruka how the civilians in particular treated Naruto. The poor child was chased, used to be beaten until Iruka put a stop to it, had his hair pulled out, hence he never let it reach past his ears anymore, and was charged twice as much at stores for items that were nearly off, meaning he went hungry often. That was how Iruka had met Naruto. He had found the blonde sitting by the river, taking deep, measured breaths as though working through pain. Before he was able to ask if the little boy was okay, the boy had clutched his stomach and thrown up, tears streaming down his face and anguish over his features. The brunette charged forward and tried to comfort the child as he threw up what could only be the lining of his stomach. The blonde tried to crawl away from him until Iruka promised he wouldn't hurt him and started to rub soothing circles on his back. That had been the first time he took Naruto to a Kuroka ramen, since the boy said he enjoyed the instant kind. Hungry? Iruka asked as he drew close enough that Naruto would hear him. The blonde jumped into a seated position, turning to look over his shoulder. Iruka sensei, yeah, but I don't have any money, someone stole it. Well come on, I'll take you for ramen. That made a large smile to appear on the boy's face as he stood up and hugged his sensei. You're the best, believe it. All right, get off me. Iruka detached Naruto's arms from around his stomach with a chuckle before leading the boy to the ramen shop. He watched the boy out of the corner of his eye, wondering how he should approach the subject. Pork ramen, please. Naruto stated cheerful once he had sat down. That was when Iruka got an idea to see if Shikamaru was right first. Naruto, you always order that, ever since I suggested it to you when we first came here. Why don't you look at the menu and pick something different? If you don't like it, I'll buy you some pork ramen after. He held out the menu, trying not to give away what he was up to. Nah, it's alright, I like pork ramen. Naruto waved him off, closing his eyes as he smiled widely. It never hurts to try something new. I might as well. Read out the options and we can both choose something. Iruka pushed the menu into Naruto's hands, who looked at it with a frown before slamming it down on the counter making Tuchi look over with a surprised look. Naruto started shaking, clenching his fists on top of the menu's glossy surface. After a moment he turned to glare at the dark-haired male, making him shudder. There was no doubt that the blonde was the container for the nine tails when he gave people that look. It looked as though he was contemplating striking out and hitting Iruka, but then his shoulders sagged and a look of defeat came across his face. How did you work it out? It took him only a moment to decide that it would be wiser to leave Shikamaru's name out of it, in case Naruto sought revenge through pulling pranks on the lazy boy. I started to notice things during class time that made me start to think that you were incapable of reading. It seemed as though I was correct. Now what are you going to do? Kick me out of the academy? No. Iruka shook his head for extra clarity. I'm going to teach you how to read. We'll start now. He slid the menu closer to him, so that both he and Naruto could read it. This one here is spelt SLT and is pronounced salt. He pointed out each letter as he said them. This word is spelt Aramian. Do you know what it says? Naruto frowned and looked over the menu, seeming to notice that everything on the menu had that particular word next to it except for the drinks. Ramen? Yeah. A smile spread across Iruka's face at seeing the joy in Naruto's eyes. The boy was obviously eager to learn this skill that had been eluding him and causing him so many problems at school. They ordered their dinner, which was their usual order, as Naruto and Iruka progressed through the menu. When they reached the end, Iruka would point at random words and ask Naruto to read them. It was slow work, but the blonde was slowly learning the techniques needed to read. He woke with a start, choking on his own saliva. Looking around, he was surprised to see there were only two boys, including himself, in the inside training ground, which bewildered him. The blonde sitting next to him gave no indication that he, too, found this unusual and instead continued to read the manga with a slight frown on his face, slowly moving his lips to spell out a word. It had been two weeks since Shikamura had spoken with Iruka sensei and he could see the difference in Naruto when it came to class work. He was still dead last but he was closing the large gap that had been between Shikamaru and himself. Even when he skipped class with Kiba, 
Choji and Shikamaru, he was always reading, trying to become better at the skill. Where are Choji and Kiba? Shikamaru asked, sitting up and quickly wiping the drool from the side of his face before his friend could see it. Naruto's blue eyes slowly moved away from the page to meet the dark-haired boy's gaze. I don't know. Choji said something about food, and I think Kiba went to the bathroom, but it's not like they ever tell me anything. Naruto's next words were said so quietly that the lazy boy nearly missed them. It's not like they like me. Shikamaru knew Naruto was correct to some extent. The only reason the other boys let the blonde hang out with them was because Shikamaru himself asked them to. He had wanted to study Naruto up close, or at least that is what he told himself, and had invited Naruto to hang out with them one day. Since then, the blonde boy was always with them when they snuck out of class, often being the one to come up with the idea for the distraction. There were also a few times they would have been caught if it was not for Naruto, who seemed to have the ability to hide even from the umbu, even with his brightly colored clothing. However, even though they had been reluctant at first, Shikamura could see that his two friends were warming up to Naruto as he had himself. They no longer saw the blonde as a nuisance but as a friend, though they would never admit it out loud, just as he would not admit, even to himself, that he cared what the blonde thought. Oh, I wanted to thank you, Naruto exclaimed suddenly, drawing Shikamaru out of his thoughts. For what? For talking to Irika sensei for me. I know it was you who pointed out I couldn't read. Naruto smiled widely, scratching the back of his head. Everyone thinks I'm an idiot, but I actually notice more than people realize. I noticed you watching me, then how you hung back after class, right before Irika sensei tracked me down and confronted me, and I noticed the look you and Irika sensei shared when you walked into class the next day. It was you who pointed out I couldn't read. Um. Shikamaru cleared his throat, feeling a blush appear on his face. He hadn't realized he was being so obvious, or perhaps he hadn't realized how observant Naruto could be. You're welcome. I see you like reading manga. Yeah, but this one has words I can't work out. He threw himself into a lying position, moving the book over so Shikamaru could see the word he was pointing at. What does that word say? Grotesque. The Q and you together can make a couple of different sounds. Shikamaru slowly moved into a lying position like Naruto's, supporting himself on his forearms and making sure not to touch the other boy. I'm telling you, Naruto read out loud in a slow voice. The fight was grotesque ko, kot, etsu? The blonde looked at Shikamaru to see if he was right. When he received a nod, he grinned proudly and went back to reading out to Shikamaru. Naruto unknowingly moved closer to him when he squirmed to get comfortable. Shikamaru told himself not to react and instead pay attention to what Naruto was reading but he was engulfed by that feminine fragrance again that seemed to always cling to the so-called boy. On top of that he was trying not to breathe too deeply. Not only would he get a lung full of Naruto's scent but he could feel every one of Naruto's breaths, feel his words rumble through his side, and feel the fabric of his jacket rub against his arm. Shikamaru was worried that if he breathed too deeply, it would distract Naruto, or make him aware to how close they were, or worse, making him feel how fast Shikamaru's heart was racing. The last one confused the dark-haired boy, since he had not done any exercise, so his heart shouldn't have been beating so fast that it felt as though it was rattling through his head. Eventually Kiba came back in with his hands in his pockets, looking bored, though Shikamaru noticed that there was a small tilt to the corner of his mouth, as though he found something amusing. He didn't voice what it was, so Shikamaru decided to keep focusing on Naruto as he progressed through the manga. It was an interesting story, with fighting and comedy in it, as well as enough challenging words that Naruto was learning more and more as he made his way through it. After some time, Choji wandered in with a grocery bag hanging from his wrist and an open bag of barbecue potato chips on his hands. Here you go, Naruto, Choji said as he pulled a cup from the bag. It's a new flavor of ramen. I thought you might want to try it. Naruto smiled widely, bracing himself on the floor to push himself up onto his feet. He seemed not to notice that his hand was on top of Shikamaru's, making the other boy cringe and drop his head. Thanks, Choji. Once on his feet, he noticed that he had hurt Shikamaru's hand, since the other boy was now sitting up and rubbing it. Sorry, Shikamaru. Naruto crouched down, 
taking the boy's hand in his own and looked over it. It doesn't look too badly hurt at least. Come on, Naruto, Choji interjected, noticing that his best friend was uncomfortable. I'll show you where the kettle in this place is and we can start eating these. Choji threw Naruto's cup of instant ramen at him before pulling his own out of the bag and dropped the rest of his snacks on the ground where he had been sitting. The blonde followed Choji with a slight bounce in his step. Shikamaru found himself smiling at this, noticing how cheery Naruto was at the small gesture of kindness. He had noticed how Naruto responded to the smallest amount of kindness, as though he had never experienced it before and was highly grateful to the person who gave it to him. The smile he gave after someone was nice to him was always the best of all his smiles. It wasn't wide, like his fake cheerful one, but small and soft, as though he did not even realize it was there, he just couldn't help but smile. Shikamaru always liked to watch it appear on the blonde's face and had even had the pleasure of causing it once when he knocked Naruto out of the way of an oncoming ball that someone had violently kicked towards Naruto's head. He had held out his hand to the blonde, asking if he was all right as he pulled Naruto to his feet. The other boy had assured Shikamaru that he was and had given him that small smile as he thanked Shikamaru for saving him. The genius was sure he was having a heart attack at that moment, but later realized he wasn't and assumed it was something he ate. When the two came back, they were happily slurping down ramen with disposable chopsticks and talking about what their favorite kinds of ramen were. Shikamaru heard Naruto say something about having started to like instant ramen because it was cheap and had a long expiry date, making the dark-haired boy remember something he had heard his parents talking about. He had been young at the time, only just having been accepted into the academy, and had not understood what they were talking about as he hid behind the kitchen door. I can't believe they are letting that monster into the academy. It'll be in Shikamaru's year. What about if they are in the same class? His mother had yelled, sounding both angry and scared. He's not a monster, he's a child, and he saved us. Shikaka sighed, disgusted at his wife's words barely hidden within his sentence. We have to tell Shikamaru to stay away from it. I can't believe the thing still lives. You think it would have starved to death. Shikamaru jumped when the sound of a fist slamming into their kitchen table thundered through the room. You will do no such thing. I hope Shikamaru meets the boy. I hope he becomes his friend. And I hope that that boy finds a cherished ally in our son. He is tormented in the village. He is denied decent food. He is denied happiness and safety. All because that boy became a savior without a say in the matter. He is not a monster, he is the one who saved us from it, and if you tell Shikamaru to stay away from him, then you can leave. He had never heard his father speak like that, especially to his mother. His mother was a scary woman, one who could easily keep a man like Shikaku in line, but this boy, one that his mother saw as a monster, seemed to be someone important to Shikaku, someone that made him stand up to his wife. The little boy was curious about who they were talking about but their conversation seemed to be over and Shikamaru knew his father would come to see if he was still asleep after the yelling. He ran as fast as he could towards his bedroom, diving under the covers and faking sleep as his father wandered in. Now he wondered if his father had been talking about Naruto, since it seemed to fit, but he did not understand why his mother would call him a monster, or why his father would call him a savior. He had noticed, though, that many hated and avoided Naruto, but he had no idea why. He had seen the hated looks the village gave Naruto, and when he asked his dad about it, he had told Shikamaru to treat the blonde how he wanted. Sure, Naruto was annoying at time, and could be really dense at the worst moments, he was a clown, and didn't seem to have any talent at being a ninja, but there was something about him, something that prevented Shikamaru from hating him. He could see it was the same for Kiba and Choji. The three boys didn't exactly see Naruto as a friend and if the blonde chose to stop hanging out with them, they probably wouldn't stop him, but it was clear that all three of them saw that Naruto was an honest person. He wouldn't use or trick them and he honestly valued their presence. If Naruto was the one his father was talking about, then he had done one thing his father wished of him, he was an ally of Naruto's. He watched the blonde sit down next to him, powering through his cup of ramen. When done, he put it down with a sigh seconds after Choji which was an accomplishment. Not bad, Choji commented, crossing his legs. But I think the broth was a bit on the weak side. 
What do you think, Naruto? Truthfully, I'm just happy to eat something, since I was starting to feel a little sick, and Irika sensei yells at me when I let that happen. Naruto shrugged before pulling a brown paper bag from his pocket that looked pathetically deflated. How much do I owe you? Choji, who was rummaging through his plastic bag didn't look up as he waved Naruto off. It was on me, I like trying new foods with someone else who likes to eat. The boy finally raised his eyes as Naruto thanked him, noticing the paper bag substituting for a wallet. It was obvious that there wasn't much money in there, and that Naruto didn't choose to be hungry. Do you want some of my chips? I love sharing, just don't take the last chip. Choji wasn't lying, he did love to share his chips with his friends, but both Kiba and Shikamura could see that he wanted to make sure Naruto was fed. If there was one thing Choji was against above all else, it was someone going without food. Wow, thanks Choji, that's really nice of you, Naruto exclaimed, putting his wallet away. Why don't you get a real wallet? Kiba asked frowning at the blonde in confusion. I can't imagine that one is very secure. Bakuza can afford ID, explained Naruto with a mouth full of chips. Shikamaru was impressed that none flew out his mouth as he spoke, something he felt the need to state. This caused the blonde to laugh and nearly choke on his mouth full, making Shikamaru beat him on the back until he could breathe again. Try not to kill me, will ya? Naruto yelled, moving close to Shikamaru's face. Learn to swallow your damn food. Shikamura pushed the boy back, trying to will away his blush as he narrowly avoided touching Naruto's chest. He ignored the raised eyebrow Choji shot him, making him wonder if Choji had noticed the blush or his odd behavior. He hoped not. He didn't want to explain his theory that Naruto was really a girl, since he didn't think even his best friend would believe him. A week later, Naruto found a green frog wallet sitting in front of his door the clasp looking like a large, silver smile. The wallet had two black, goggly eyes that rolled around, and under the clasp was a white cloth strip with the words Naruto's wallet scrolled in handwriting that looked as though the person had put a lot of effort into making the words neat. The blonde picked it up and looked around, not seeing anyone. Smiling the happiest smile anyone had seen on his face, he held the wallet up like it was a cherished pet. I'm going to call you Gamachan. Cradling the gift in his arms, he unlocked his door and walked in, the clear sound of the lock being fastened ringing through the hallway. Shikamaru let out the breath he had been holding when he heard that, moving out from around the corner. He had been worried that Naruto would walk down the hallway to see if anyone was hiding there, but luckily he seemed to not want to question the charity. Truthfully he didn't know why he had asked his father for the money to buy the wallet when he saw it in the store. It was believed to be good luck to have a frog in a person's wallet, like a figurine, so he figured having a frog wallet would be even luckier, helping Naruto to get more money. He hadn't expected the other boy to cherish the gift so much, but he was happy he did. He wasn't surprised when he found out Naruto failed the genin exam. The moment he entered the room and was asked to perform a clone jutsu, he knew that Naruto would not pass. He saw the boy, sitting on the swing, looking at those that graduated. He had contemplated going up to him and talking to him but then Shikamaru's parents had arrived to congratulate him. By the time he disentangled himself from them, Naruto had disappeared. It was probably for the best. He had no clue what he would say to the blonde, since Shikamaru saw it coming. Everyone did. It was because of this that he was stunned to find Naruto sitting at one of the tables amongst the graduates. Truthfully, he had been annoyed that Naruto thought he could get away with trying to sneak into the genin graduation. It wouldn't work. The moment Iroka sensei walked in, he would be busted. He stopped his descent down the stairs when he spotted the blonde. What are you doing here, Naruto? His tone may have been harsher than it should have been. This isn't for dropouts. You can't be here unless you graduated. Naruto sat up, glaring at Shikamaru. Oh yeah, do you see this? He pointed a thumb at his forehead where the dark-haired boy saw a ninja headband. Do you see this? Open your eyes, Shikamaru. It's a regulation headband. We're going to be training together. How do you like that? He smiled widely, his eyes closed. Shikamaru put a hand on his hip, quickly processing the information. He honestly didn't know how he felt about Naruto training with him. He was shocked, annoyed, happy, 
and slightly short of breath. In response he huffed. Let me put it this way, Naruto went on. I look great in this headgear, like it was made for me. Believe it. Sweeping his eyes over the blonde's forehead, he noticed that it already had a scratch or two on it, and had a slightly different shade cloth on it than Shikamaru's. The taller boy instantly recognized it as Iruka sensei's making him wonder why Naruto didn't get one of the new ones like everyone else. A few harsh replies came to mind but when he looked at Naruto's genuinely happy smile, he couldn't bring himself to say any of them. Many of Naruto's smiles were fake, but this one wasn't. Congratulations, Naruto. The look of surprise on Naruto's face was worth it. Thanks, Shikamaru. Congratulations to you too. Clearing his throat, he nodded and headed over to Choji who was looking at Shikamaru with a questioning look. To try and stop the boy from speaking the question that was clearly on his mind, Shikamaru asked him what he would like to do after being assigned to groups when they hung out. It worked to some extent, for it turned Choji's mind to food, since he wanted to eat. There was a commotion behind the dark-haired boy, but he would tell from the words that reached his ears that it was just Sasuke's fangirls. A quick glance at Naruto's direction, since he knew the blonde boy had been sitting next to Sasuke, found the blonde on the ground, looking bewildered and annoyed. Shikamaru could only roll his eyes at the girls until he saw Naruto frown. The look in Naruto's eyes was not something he had been able to witness before, but he identified it easily. Naruto was studying the situation. Next moment, the blonde was crouching on the desk, frowning at Sasuke. The dark-haired boy stared back with a blank look. Shikamaru could never tell what kind of relationship those two had, since they would often seek each other out, sitting next to each other, but everything indicated that they hated each other. His face tightened and an uncomfortable feeling entered his stomach as he watched Naruto lean closer to the popular boy. The two boys ignored the Sasuke's fan club as they yelled at Naruto. Next moment, the boy sitting in front of Sasuke leant back with a laugh, unknowingly knocking Naruto forward. Shikamaru couldn't register what he was seeing at first. He didn't seem to be the only one. His mind went foggy, his eyes widened. His jaw dropped open as the girls all started to yell. Naruto and Sasuke pulled apart with disgusted looks on their faces, holding their throats and spitting. Naruto suddenly stopped and went still, whispering something about danger. He couldn't blame the blonde. Sasuke's fan club looked like they were out for blood. Naruto, you are so dead, Sakura growled. Hey, wait, it was an accident. Naruto held up his hands in a defensive manner. Sakura cracked her knuckles. You're dead. Naruto looked scared with the girls glaring at him. Hold on. The girls rushed him, pulling him off the table and punching him. Naruto instantly put up his arms, tucking his head in to try and protect his head and stomach. He did it so quickly that Shikamaru wondered how much practice Naruto had with defending himself. Shaking his head, Shikamaru walked forward, grabbing Ino's arm as she went in for another punch. That's enough. It was an accident and beating up Naruto won't change that. He pushed his way in between Naruto and the group of girls, staring at them with an annoyed look. Looking over his shoulder he noticed Naruto slumping against the desk, bruised. He hadn't thrown a single hit at the girls. A girl that Shikamura thought was called Aya piped up, her two bushy pigtails poking in the air. But he stole Sasuke's first kiss. His heart stopped before clenching painfully. Looking at Naruto again, seeing him sitting on the floor, his tongue prodding the bruise forming on his lip, made the feeling worse. Taking a deep breath, Shikamura faced the crowd again, ignoring the worried look Choji shot him. Well it happened, so get over it. Shikamura turned around bending down to help Naruto up. As he did, Sakura charged past to get the seat next to Sasuke. Grasping his arm, Shikamura pulled Naruto up onto the seat. What a drag. Thanks, Shikamaru, Naruto whispered, giving him a small smile before slumping in his seat. He swallowed before nodding mutely. Ino growled, allowing Shikamaru to ignore his racing heartbeat. Billboard brow, what do you think you are doing? Before Ino could start a fight with Sakura, that would no doubt result in more pain for Naruto, Shikamura grabbed her arm and dragged her to the table behind Sasuke's, practically throwing her into the chair just as Iruka-sensei walked into the room. 
The dark-haired boy rested his chin on his palm as he half listened to what Aruko sensei was telling them about the teams they were going to join. Truthfully he didn't care who he ended up in a group with as long as he didn't have to put up with Ino. She was currently whispering snide comments about Sakura and Naruto under her breath. Shikamura couldn't help but notice that Iruka sensei was wearing a headband identical to his own. As of today you are all ninjas. To get here you have difficult trials and hardships. But that's nothing. What comes next will be far more difficult. Now you are only genin, first level ninjas. All the genin will be grouped into three man squads. Each squad will be led by a jonin, an elite ninja. Whilst Iruka sensei spoke, Shikamaru watched Naruto, wondering if he was going to move from his place, slumped on the desk. Well, someone's got to be in Sasuke's group, Ino said in a snide voice. I wonder who. I don't know, Sakura replied in an airy voice. Naruto slowly sat up, looking around. Shikamura wondered what he was looking for. Perhaps he had temporary memory loss and didn't know where he was or what was going on. Then the dark-haired boy noticed Naruto look at Sakura. He felt sick. It seemed Naruto had a crush on a girl who thought he was scum, though she had no reason to think that. She was just stuck up and anyone who wasn't Sasuke wasn't worth her time. Truthfully, Shikamaru couldn't tell who he wanted to be in a group with, though Choji would be nice. We want each squad to have a balance of strength and abilities, Iruka sensei continued. So that's how we set them up. Shikamaru made sure to keep his ears open for his name, but other than that, he didn't see a point to paying attention. He definitely noticed that Naruto ended up on a team with Sakura, which Naruto was overly thrilled with, and Sasuke, which he was not so thrilled about. Turning his head away from the table in front of him, Shikamaru tried to ignore the feeling gnawing at his insides. A barely suppressed groan passed his lips when he heard that he was in a team with Ino. At least he had Choji to keep him company. When he met his sensei, with the rest of his newly formed team, he would have been impressed if he could see through the smoke that clouded his vision. They were able to get their sensei to put out his cigarette when they couldn't speak around their coughs. He seemed like a competent leader. Although his habit was far from healthy, Shikamaru knew that almost every ninja had his or her vice. His own father drank, most of Choji's family ate, and Ino was obsessive over boys and looks, though he couldn't tell if that was an actual vice. If he had to guess his own, he would say that he enjoyed studying people too much, or was lazy. Asuma-sensei had them name their favorite and least favorite things, as well as a dream of theirs. Shikamaru groaned when Ino used it as an excuse to talk about Sasuke for five minutes. It would have been longer, no doubt, if their sensei hadn't put a stop to it. It was obvious that he was paying close attention to all three of them and the way they behaved. Once they had answered his questions about themselves, he told them something they did not expect. Only three teams will move on to the next level of ninja. Some jonins decide within days whether or not their team will be sent back to the academy. Now, I'm not going to do that. We have a couple of months before we decide and I plan to use them. However, if you all show little improvement or talent, I will have to send you back earlier. You shouldn't worry though, I'm sure you will all do well. One thing you have to remember is that you are a team. You pass or fail together, so if you slack off or refuse to work, you are letting down the other two members in your team. He let them think over his words for a moment. Shikamaru shot a look at Ino. He had no doubt that he could work with Choji, and that the heavy boy wouldn't let him down, but Ino he wasn't so sure about. For all he knew, she could be contemplating whether Sasuke would be sent back, since he was on a team with Naruto, giving her the opportunity to be put on his team. To his surprise, the blonde had what looked like a determined look on her face. Perhaps he had misjudged her. Turning back to their sensei, Shikamaru listened to the man as he talked about their training schedule and what kind of missions they were liable to go on for the first couple of months. It seemed all routine really, which was fine with Shikamaru. Once they were finished, they were told to meet the next day in one of the training grounds to work on teamwork. Their sensei wasn't going to let them on any missions until he had learned their strengths and weaknesses and they had started to learn to cover them with team strategy. Chapter 2 Naruto Uzumaki Asuma's POV. His team had adapted to working together quickly. 
At first, he had been worried. He had a student obsessed over looks and boys, a student obsessed with food, and a student who seemed to only like being sleep. It hadn't looked good for them but then he had them train against him. He had given them ten minutes to strategies, away from his line of sight, and then they either attacked him, or he went after them. Before the time was up, he found himself being maneuvered into trap after trap. He was able to get out of them, but that was beside the point. Three twelve-year-olds were able to work together to put their sensei on the back step. After the fourth training session, when Shikamaru had wandered off to nap, Asuma had asked his other two students how they had managed to come up with a plan so quickly that worked so well. He was even bleeding. It was a surprise to hear the name of the lazy ninja come out of their mouths. He had asked them to repeat themselves at first. When he had confirmed that he had heard Choji and Ino correctly, he had sent them to train together whilst he went in search of Shikamaru. He hadn't noticed the dark-haired boy disappear at first, but Choji was able to point him in the right direction. The boy was sitting at the base of a tree, leaning against the wood, looking out at a field in front of him. The look on Shikamaru's face made Asuma pause. Normally the boy looked bored but at that moment it looked as though he had came across a puzzle that had to be solved. Only, he didn't know the correct answer. Following Shikamaru's line of sight, Asuma noticed the people sitting in the clearing, having a picnic. He tried to not chalk on his own saliva. He had not expected to see Kakashi Hataki having a picnic with three children. Asuma especially didn't expect the copy ninja to look so happy whilst doing so. Nevertheless, there he was, sitting with a girl with pink hair and two boys. The girl was giving the dark-haired boy doe eyes, which the dark-haired boy ignored, and the blonde was talking with Kakashi happily. Even from a distance, Asuma could see that the blonde had a bit of food on his face, and that Kakashi was amused at something. I thought you would be sleeping. Shikamaru jumped, looking around with an almost guilty expression on his face. Clearly he had not noticed his sensei standing next to him, having been too busy watching Kakashi's team. He quickly calmed down, a bored look coming over his face as he turned back to face the training area in front of them. I was going to lie over there but Team 7 is there. Last thing I wanted was for Ino to come looking for me to yell at me about something and to see Sasuke. She's extra annoying around him. Asuma turned his eyes back onto Kakashi's team, looking more closely at the two boys. Which one is Sasuke? When Shikamura looked at him in surprise Asuma shrugged. I don't pay much attention to gossip so I'm not too sure who he is. Don't say that to Ino. He's the one with the dark hair and the shape of a duck's butt. Shikamura lazily pointed, which did little, since at that point the two boys started arguing moving closer as though their angry postures and scrunched-up faces weren't doing well enough to convey their hostility. His description was enough for Asuma and made him chuckle. He turned his eyes back onto Shikamaru, who had closed his eyes and leant his head back. I've been thinking I have a couple of puzzles and games you might like. I'll bring one around tomorrow afternoon. Shikamaru shrugged, slowly rising to his feet and brushing dirt off his pants. All right, I'll let mum know. He walked towards the training grounds they had been using, putting his back towards Kakashi's team. May as well find somewhere else to relax. Shikamaru was easily the laziest genius he had ever met. There was little to motivate the boy. But, Asuma had to admit, when it came to missions, the boy was reliable. It had gotten to the point that Asuma would ask Shikamaru to come up with the battle plan, and suggest things to improve it after the young boy had outlined his ideas. There was no doubt that Shikamaru would become one of the greatest strategists the village had ever seen, if he could be bothered. Asuma knew there had to be something to drive Shikamaru to be ambitious, to think about his future and to work harder in becoming a ninja. So far, Asuma had learned that his mother was no help. In Shikamaru's words, she was troublesome. Choji was good at getting Shikamaru to work, but Asuma couldn't rely on the heavy boy to always pull Shikamaru into line. He needed to know more about the boy, but that was hard. Shikamaru never divulged anything about himself unless he wanted to or you somehow tricked him into it, such as with his IQ. Asuma knew that Shikamaru liked naps and watching clouds and that was the extent of it. He knew a list of things in regards to Choji and Ino. He took this time to study Shikamaru, who was sleeping by the fire with Choji and Ino. This was their first mission that forced them to make camp. 
It was still a D-rank mission, unlike Kakashi's team that went on a C-rank turn to rank for their first away mission. It wasn't like he was bitter or anything. But back to Shikamaru. The kid was lying on his back, his knees making sharp bulges in his sleeping bag as he kicked and twitched. His face was scrunched up and he muttered incoherently. Asuma didn't know if he should wake the boy up or not. He thought about getting his students to do some of the night shift to get a feel for it, even if it meant that he had to pretend to be asleep. Just as he was about to move from his position and wake up Shikamaru, the boy rolled over. His face relaxed, a small smile appearing. Asuma had no clue what the boy could be dreaming about to make him look so at peace. He had never even looked that way whilst awake. Even though his eyes were closed, Asuma could tell there was something to the expression, he just didn't know what. As though reading his sensei's mind, Shikamaru unknowingly provided him with the answer. Naruto. The word was said so softly that the man almost missed it but once it registered in his mind his jaw dropped, his cigarette falling onto his lap. Swearing quietly, he patted the spark that had appeared on his pants. Grabbing his smoke off the ground, he put it out, before it could burn him again. Once he was out of danger of combustion Asuma looked back at Shikamaru again, who had put his arm under his head as a pillow. He still had that same small smile, but as he buried his face into the crook of his arm, his smile grew. How interesting Asuma thought. So there is a Naruto in his life. No, that can't be right. If he was dating a girl, Ino would have mentioned it. She loves to gossip. He must not have said anything to anyone. Well then? He left Shikamaru to his dream. The boy slept peacefully until morning where the sun blinded all three genins. Ino woke with a grumble, Choji woke asking about breakfast, and Shikamaru, he woke with that same smile, as though the bright yellow of the sun was something amazing. The smile disappeared once his sleep-disoriented mind woke up. His bored expression came back into place. Asuma didn't mind. Shikamaru might not realize it, but Asuma had been let in on a secret that was hidden from everyone. If only he knew who Naruto was. There was nothing he could do with the information, but he enjoyed having it anyway. The amount of pride he felt was indescribable. His grin grew as Kakashi walked up to them. The copy ninja shook his head, chuckling to himself, as he dropped ungracefully onto the seat. When Asuma raised an eyebrow at Kakashi's amusement, the white-haired man waved him off. I can't believe they are already sitting to tune in exams, Kurinai stated, her red eyes glinting. Do you think any of them will pass? I wouldn't be surprised if Shino does. Kiba is strong but he can be a bit reckless and Hinata, well she's skilled but has little confidence. I just hope she does her best and starts to realize how much she has improved. Asuma smiled at the young woman. I'm sure they will all grow in these exams. Even if a person fails, they learn from their mistakes and improve. I know that two of my students, Ino and Choji, don't have what it takes to be chunits yet. They will one day. I'm just hoping they will learn what it takes from this. Also, I had to give them all a chance because I think Shikamaru could really get there, if he can be bothered. He sighed, knowing that once it hit the final examination that someone would have to give Shikamaru a hard push to get him motivated. Asuma toyed with the idea of threatening to tell Ino about Shikamaru's crush on Naruto, but the jonin then realized that for all he knows Naruto could have been Shikamaru's family cat that he missed. Kakashi hummed, drawing Asuma's attention. I can't really say much about my students. One of them I think will not pass this time, another will definitely come close or will actually pass, and that's Sasuke and well. Naruto should never be overlooked. I learned that one the hard way. Sometimes you just want to beat that knucklehead into the ground, and other times you find yourself going along with whatever popped into that kid's head. If I had to choose someone who's improved the most I would say Naruto, and I never actually expected that. Kakashi rubbed his chin, looking at the ceiling before he gave an eye smile, chuckling to himself. That kid certainly does surprise me. So Naruto is on your team? Asuma could have slapped himself when he saw Kakashi look at him. How was he going to get out of this one without the other male working out one of Asuma's students had a crush on Naruto? He couldn't divulge Shikamaru's secret, especially when said boy didn't know about Asuma's awareness. Yes, why do you ask? The name came up. Choji mentioned Naruto and something about a bridge. 
Asuma trailed off. It wasn't a lie, he had overheard snippets of a conversation that had mentioned those two things he just hadn't understood a word of it. Yeah, I've heard the name too but haven't been able to put a face, or a sensei to them. So what's this about a bridge? Karina looked between the two males, waiting for one of them to elaborate. Asuma looked at Kakashi, who sighed. It was the A-rank mission that was originally AC-rank and that Naruto had hounded the Hokage to give to us. Basically the village was so impressed with the team, and Naruto especially, that they named the bridge Uzumaki Bridge, after the knucklehead. That was the second time Kakashi had called Naruto a knucklehead. Thinking back at the time he had seen Kakashi's team, he hadn't thought the girl was thickhead. She did seem to be infatuated with Sasuke though. Poor Shikamaru. No wonder he was staring at the team. He was trying to work out how to get the girl to notice him over Sasuke. He decided he would have to observe Shikamaru with Naruto so that Asuma could give him some pointers on how to get her to stop fawning over Sasuke. That was if he could convince the boy to actually bother to try instead of muttering what a drag all the time and calling girls troublesome. Sometimes the things that boy said could come off as sexist, but Asuma knew that he recognized and respected strong women. He just wanted to avoid the ones like his own mother. But Naruto must have been skilled if a town named a bridge after her. He had heard from his father about that mission, and how one of the boys had nearly died, another getting poisoned at the beginning of the mission as well, and Kakashi being taken out of commission for most of it. Just hearing about it had made Asuma feel as though he had swallowed a giant ice cube. If it had been his team he would have turned them around straight away but for some reason Kakashi didn't and it had turned out well in the end. Finding out Naruto hounded his father though made him want to smile. She must have been stronger willed than she had appeared to him. If Asuma had to pick a person on Kakashi's team to hassle the Hokage into doing something it would probably have been the blonde. Chapter 3 What a Drag R&R &R. It was already troublesome. Ino had wanted to get there early, before most of the other participants, so he had been dragged out of bed long before he would have liked to be. They had sat around in a room that was quickly filling with mean-looking genins that were at least two years their senior. They knew going in that they were the rookies but Shikamura had not realized that the others would be so much older than they were. Ino didn't seem phased by any of it and simply kept looking towards the door every time it opened. Shikamura sighed realizing the only reason she had insisted they arrive so early was so she would be able to spend as much time as possible with Sasuke. As he grumbled at the thought of lost sleep because of Sasuke he waved off Choji, who was offering him chips. It was far too early for junk food. He stayed seated, resting his head on the table and wishing he could go to sleep. A high-pitched squeal broke the slumber he was drifting into. Sitting up with a yawn he saw that Ino had disappeared. He looked at Choji raising an eyebrow. His friend nodded towards the entrance. With a sigh, Shikamaru stood up walking with Choji to find the third member of their team. The last thing they needed was for something to happen to her. As they drew closer to the doors Shikamaru stopped, observing the scene in front of them. Ino had found Sasuke, and was half hanging off the boy whose posture was tense as she argued with Sakura. Naruto, though, was doing the unexpected. He had stepped back taking himself out of the line of fire of the two girls arguing. Oh, it's you guys, Shikamaru stated, recovering from the scene and walking forward with his hands in his pockets. Naruto looked surprised. I knew this was going to be a drag but I didn't know it was going to be this lame. So all three stooges are here, Naruto retorted. Shikamaru felt something burn in his stomach as Naruto looked at him. Hey, you know what, pipsqueak dash? Ah, uh, forget it, you're a waste of time. Naruto scoffed at him, looking unhappy with him. Ino saved him having to think of something to say. So, Sasuke's all mine. She pulled the skin under her eye as she stuck her tongue out. Well, well, what do you know? Kiba laughed as he walked up to the others with his team in tow, Akamaru sitting on his head. It looks like the whole gang is back together again. Oh, hi, Naruto, Hanada greeted breathlessly. When Naruto turned his eyes onto her she turned red looking down. Shikamaru felt an emptiness appear in his stomach, which was odd, since he had eaten breakfast. It wasn't a comfortable feeling either, the emptiness sitting heavily around his abdomen. You guys too, huh? Shikamaru frowned, trying to keep the growl from his voice. 
Man, everyone's here for this stupid thing. Yep, Kiba boasted, here we all are. The nine rookies. Ha ha ha, this is gonna be fun. At least, for those of us good enough to make the cut. He looked at Sasuke, making his meaning obvious. Right, Sasuke? Kiba, be careful you don't get overly confident. Sasuke smirked as Ino started to get mad behind him. Just wait, we're going to blow you guys away. Kiba pulled his shoulders back. We've been training like crazy. What do you think we've been doing? Naruto snapped, frowning at the boy with a dog on his head. Sitting around picking daisies? He pointed at Kiba. You don't know what training means. Shikamaru chose to not mention that he had seen Naruto's team having a picnic. Mainly since Choji had told him about his conversation with Naruto where the blonde had gotten a bridge named after him. He didn't know how though. Besides, he had just started to feel better, and the last thing he wanted was the troublesome experience of being yelled at by Naruto. Uh, don't mind Kiba, Hinata apologized, twirling her fingers. I'm sure he didn't really mean anything by it. The feeling was back. He was starting to think the Hyaga girl was causing it, though how or why he wasn't sure. He simply looked away, noticing how Naruto frowned at Hinata before shaking his head. Perhaps she was causing the same feeling in the blonde as she was in Shikamaru. He hadn't really interacted with Hinata and he didn't think that Naruto had either. There were a number of jutsus that can affect people's bodies, but he didn't think that someone like Hinata could do something like that. Whilst everyone was focusing on Choji and Shino, Shikamaru took the time to study Naruto, something he had been deprived of for months. He still looked the same, wearing bright clothing, keeping his eyes nearly closed but he took longer to bite. He had let Shikamaru back down from an argument, he had let Kiba boast until Kiba insinuated that his team was weak. He had only snapped in defense of Sasuke. That was unexpected. Not only that, but the two hadn't even shared a bad look. On the contrary, they were calm around each other, both standing tall, either ignoring nor acknowledging each other. It was unusual. A boy named Kabuto broke him out of his evaluation of Naruto by pointing out that they had drawn attention to themselves. He honestly hadn't noticed all the people glaring at them but now that he did, he couldn't imagine how he had been oblivious. When Kabuto told them that he had tried and failed the Chunin exam seven times Shikamaru had been surprised. This guy must be an idiot. Naruto seemed to think the guy was a genius. Shikamaru nearly scoffed. Yeah, some expert, he's never passed. Shikamaru pointed out at Naruto's excited words. Kabuto at least looked embarrassed by the dark-haired boy's words. Well, seven times the charm, that's what they say, huh? He scratched the back of his head. So I guess all those rumors about the exam being hard are true. Oh man, I knew this was going to be a drag. Why did Asuma-sensei have to sign them up to this thing? Hang on, don't give up hope yet. Kabuto reached for something in his pouch, pulling out a deck of orange cards. Maybe I can help you kids out a little with my ninja info cards. What the heck are those? Sakura asked. Shikamura thought it was pretty obvious by the name, though it did make him wonder what it would say on him. He listened to Kabuto's explanation, noting when he took a jab at Shikamaru, saying he hadn't completely been wasting his time. Admittedly, they were impressive. Shikamaru could already think of multiple practical uses of them, except for the fact that Kabuto seemed to state that only his chakra could reveal the information. The ninja would have to change that fact to allow a selection of people to access the information in it for it to be of actual use. He hadn't realized the politics of the exam though. However, it rose the question again about why Asuma sensei and the other senseis had let rookies in on it. Especially Naruto. That guy was a political catastrophe waiting to happen. He was liable to do something stupid like punch a ninja from another village all because they looked at him wrong. Oh yeah, balance of power, Naruto agreed as though that made sense to him. Balance of power, big deal, it's all a drag. Shikamaru was starting to get really bored with the conversation but couldn't leave. His team was there after all. If the balance isn't maintained one nation could end up with many more shinobi than its neighbors and it might be tempted to attack them. So they try to maintain the status quo. Makes sense, I suppose? Hum Shikamura thought over what he said, whilst also taking in how many ninjas were in the room. 
it seemed like the higher-ups were actually hoping for most of them to fail. That was an encouraging thought. When Sasuke started asking about the card's information on people Shikamura tuned in noting that Kabuto admitted to having information on them. It would have been intriguing to know what he had on them. He was not going to ask to see it though. There were some missions he wasn't so proud of and knew what he would hear from Naruto. However, he was curious about that bridge. He heard Naruto make a noise next to him, making him look over. The blonde stood there, his arms closed, his eyes almost closed, hiding the blue to them, nodding his head. He doesn't have a clue what's going on. Shikamura tried not to sigh. Naruto was still the same idiot, even if he didn't start arguments as easily. Truthfully, Shikamura was hoping he would do something stupid just for some entertainment. The people Sasuke asked about were interesting, especially Gara from the sand but Shikamura had no idea how the other boy would know about Gara or someone named Rock Lee. It was clear that the other villagers weren't pulling any punches whilst the leaf they had put them in. What a drag. We're never going to pass if this guy can't after seven tries. Shikamura sighed under his breath, his hands digging deeper into his pockets. There was no helping it. He just had to do his best and hope that he and his team didn't die in the process. Hokage helped him. He was even worried about Ino. He wouldn't admit it but Naruto's words had helped him. He had been given a way out, one that ensured his team was safe. It had been tempting. All he had to do was raise his hand and say he was out, that it was too troublesome. Then Naruto had raised his hand, shocking Shikamaru. He never thought Naruto would quit. But then he opened his mouth. He had shouted how he would be Hokage even if he was a genin for the rest of his life. It was no secret that Naruto struggled with these types of exams. He could read now, but he still wasn't that skilled. The chances of him getting the answer wrong were high, and yet, he refused to back down. Naruto was going to go for his dream, even if he had to do it the hard way. How could Shikamaru, who had no issue in answering the questions without cheating, back out from something he found so easy. It wouldn't be fair to Naruto, or to his team. He had to trust Choji and Ino to look after themselves, to be strong enough to handle themselves and if, in the next round, they were in danger, he would help them. He stayed seated. No matter how much he tried to stare determinately at the instructor, he still found his eyes going to Naruto. The blonde sat straight, confident, ignoring the blushing girl gazing at him. She likes him. He realized, ignoring the hollow feeling to his chest. Hinata likes Naruto. It had never occurred to him that there might be a girl out there who had a crush on Naruto. Why would they? He was loud, idiotic, admittedly funny, but rash as well. Shikamaru could never predict what stupid thing he was going to do next. Like when he shouted to the entire room his name, and that he would beat them. Or when he yelled in the exam just moments ago. Though that wasn't stupid, that was brave. Shikamaru did have to acknowledge that Naruto was brave, but he wasn't very strong. He would probably lose a fight to a puppy. He smirked at Naruto's back. It was obvious how much he had affected those in the room. Naruto's words, and the feeling he created in that exam stayed with Shikamaru. He couldn't shake it, even when they entered the forest the next day. Truthfully his nerve might have been shaken if he didn't have it sitting at the back of his mind. When he had seen Sakura having to defend her team by herself he had frozen. He had made it seem like it was Ino's choice what they did but in truth he had every intention of jumping out. Both Naruto and Sasuke were unconscious, badly beaten. He didn't know what happened, but he knew it was bad. When Choji had tried to run he had grabbed his scarf, telling Choji that he couldn't leave a girl to fight alone. The words tasted like lemons in his mouth. Choji was strong but he was a coward at times. Lucky for Shikamaru their enemy had said the F word. It was disappointing that two-thirds of Team 7 were out cold. They would have been jealous that they wouldn't have been able to move let alone throw scornful words at them. Once the enemy had retreated it was Choji's and Shikamaru's job to wake up Naruto, the only one still unconscious. The dark-haired boy had been fine with that, until Naruto started talking in his sleep. He was kicking and flailing the whole time. Sakura, I need to protect you, Naruto muttered. Sakura. He stopped breathing for a minute before he had to repress the urge to growl. 
Anger was building in him, making him glare down at the form on the ground. T.S., this is embarrassing, he spat, noticing that Choji nodded, though he quirked an eyebrow. Shikamaru quickly found a plank of wood, which seemed out of place given how well-shaped it was. Clasping it in both his hands, he aimed, making contact with Naruto's crown. He took satisfaction with the yelp that rang out. Naruto blithered about danger and some woman with a snake, or a snake neck. He wasn't very clear. They chose to leave him oblivious about what had occurred, simply assuring him that his teammates were as safe as they looked. The look of relief that came over his face at those words caused mixed feelings in Shikamaru. Part of him wanted to hit Naruto with the plank of wood again, preferably harder this time, and another part wanted to tell him how his team had stepped in, that he would have stepped in even if Ino and Choji abandoned him. He felt his mouth opening though what was going to come out was beyond him. Before he could find out the hard way he closed his mouth with a sharp click. He gave them a tilt to his head as his team left. As they walked away something reached his ears, something that dispelled the anger pooling in his abdomen. Sakura, are you all right? The last thing I remember is you being attacked. You and Sasuke are okay, aren't you? Yes, Naruto, we are fine. The enemy retreated, thanks to you. They left just after you lost consciousness. I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry I left you by yourself. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm glad Shikamaru and the others were here. Remind me to thank them for protecting my team. I will. I thank them for protecting my team too. A smile slid onto his face as all negative feelings disappearing from within his chest. One line seemed to stick with him. No matter how much he tried he couldn't shake one particular line. I'm glad Shikamaru and the others were here. It replayed over and over. Whenever his smile slipped it would resound, bringing it back in full force. It was after a good ten minute walk that he stopped, his eyes wide. Oh what a drag! He shouted in his mind, realizing that it wasn't Hinata causing him problems the day before, and he didn't have heart problems back in the academy. Just like minutes ago his emotions, and apparently the speed of his heart, were being affected by something else. That impulsive blonde was the cause of all of this. When his teammates stopped and looked at him in worry he pushed it to the back of his mind, deciding to deal with it at a later date. They had to focus on getting an earth scroll, which took them four days. The chunin that greeted them was one Shikamura had seen in the first section of the exams. He had chin-length brown hair and looked at them with amusement. Once he had congratulated them he led them into the rest of the tower, showing them their sleeping quarters where they could rest until the exams finished the next day. This unfortunately gave him time to think. He couldn't work it out. What did this mean for him? What if he was wrong? Why did he still refer to Naruto as he instead of she? Was it only because he didn't know why Naruto hid her gender and didn't want to be the one to reveal her secret? He couldn't work out what questions he was asking let alone the answers to said questions. Snapping out of his thoughts he noticing that he had his fingers positioned with his fingertips touching. He had been told it was a nervous habit. Choji was sitting next to him, not making a noise. For once he wasn't even munching on anything. Shikamura looked at him opening his mouth before closing it and looking away. He couldn't honestly say what was running through his mind. It would be mortifying. Thinking it over, he finally opened his mouth, not looking at Choji next to him though. I'm having an issue with a puzzle. Do you think you could help me? I can do my best. When Ino said that Sakura looked like a boy, it sparked a question in my head. Sakura likes Sasuke, but imagine if Sakura actually looked like a boy not just how Ino says she does. If the situation was reversed and Sasuke liked Sakura, who looked like a boy, would that make him gay, even if his 99% sure she's a girl? Would that 1% make him gay? Or is he still straight? Shikamaru hoped his question was coherent, and that he kept his uncertainty from his voice. Choji was silent for a while before making a thoughtful noise and opening his mouth. It depends on whether 99% of him knew Sakura was a girl, or believed it. At the confused look he received, he elaborated. I am 99% certain that Brussels sprouts are healthy, but I don't believe something that nasty can be healthy, therefore, to me, they aren't. So if Sasuke, in your scenario, believes that Sakura is a girl, then he is attracted to female Sakura. 
if she turned out to be a he and Sasuke still found Sakura attractive, then he either can look past gender because it's not something that affects him, or he is attracted to boys. Shikamaru mulled over what his friend had told him. He wanted to say he was 100% sure that Naruto was a girl but he knew that, logically, he couldn't say that, since he had no definitive proof. He believed without a doubt that Naruto was a girl. Thank you, Choji, you helped me to solve my puzzle. He may not show it but he was glad to have Choji as his friend. Nodding, Choji stood up, stretching his legs. You know, even if Sasuke did like a male Sakura, my opinion of him wouldn't change. That's not something that can change the way I view a person. For a moment he found himself in a state of surprise. There was no way Choji could mean what he thought he did. The way his friend only gave him a brief look out of the corner of his eye let him know that yes, he did. With a small smile, Shikamaru stood too. That's good to know. Do you want to go to the mess hall? Or do you want to stay here and have me bring us something to eat? Nah, we can just go to the mess hall. It shouldn't be too troublesome. He walked with his friend out of the room feeling settled. They would go away. Naruto was weak, idiotic, rash, boisterous, rude and he didn't care for strategy at all. There was nothing appealing about him and eventually Shikamaru's feelings would wake up to themselves and realize that. It would save him the embarrassment of anyone finding out how much influence the blonde had over him. He reminded himself of this fact again, and again as they lined up in front of the Hokage in some sort of indoor fighting grounds. His anger at having to have a preliminary round helped to dispel any thoughts that his revolution had caused to sit in his mind. When they were asked if anyone wanted to withdraw Naruto seemed especially shocked that Kabuto put up his hand, saying that he just didn't have the energy and was injured. No wonder he never passed. But Shikamaru found it odd. Why would someone come so close? try so hard and not want to try and see it to the end. If he felt as though he was going to die during the preliminary, he could always forfeit. There was something wrong with that guy and Shikamaru was sure his feelings didn't stem from the fact that Naruto gave him attention. Something just didn't sit right but he had no way of working out what it was. The rules were explained to them before the first two people were chosen. Surprise, surprise it was Sasuke, going up against a Leaf member from Kabuto's team. Shikamaru's team, along with everyone else, headed towards the stairs that would take them to the balcony above. Sakura and Naruto stayed behind to wish Sasuke luck and to greet Kakashi-sensei. Shikamaru's own sensei gave him an unusual smile when the three genin stopped in front of him. He just raised an eyebrow in return before feeling someone tap his shoulder. Turning, he found Naruto standing there staring at him. With his blonde hair falling around his forehead protector his blue eyes appeared brighter. Shikamura put his hands into his pockets, looking down at Sasuke and his opponent. What is it? I wanted to thank you and your team for helping us. With Sasuke and I unconscious there was no way those sound asses would be stopped. Without you, well I don't really want to think about what would have happened. Anyway, thank you. You didn't have to help us but you did and I. I owe you one. Shikamaru noticed Naruto scratch the back of his head before nodding to Choji and Ino. He looked back at the blonde in front of him, not knowing what to say. You don't know me. Yes, I do. He was taking it so seriously that Shikamaru was forced into silence. You are annoying, and sleep most of the time, and are so lazy that you can't even be bothered to argue about anything you care about, or be passionate about anything. The dark-haired boy bit his tongue, not trusting himself to speak but no matter what. I've got your back whenever you need me. He knew his mouth was hanging open. He also knew that his team, Bara Sumasensei, was also looking at Naruto with surprise. The blonde had never sounded so sincere or grounded to Shikamaru. There went his heart again, making him feel like he was going to have a heart attack. Troublesome. Naruto seemed to realize that they had no reply because he gave Shikamaru a soft smile which did not cause any pink to appear on Shikamaru's face, before walking back to Sakura. Kick his ass, Sasuke. Naruto cheered, pumping his fist in the air. Sasuke actually smirked at hearing the loud words. Do you have to be so obnoxious? Sakura scoffed. Naruto put his arm around Sakura's shoulders, pulling her close. We have to cheer on our teammate. Aren't you proud to be in Team Kakashi? 
Sakura tried to frown but a smile broke out across her face. Go Sasuke, show them how it's done. Yeah. Team Kakashi, huh? Asuma sensei's words made him jump. Looking over his shoulder he saw his sensei studying the other team, paying close attention to the blonde. That boy certainly has heart. But I wonder why they don't call themselves Team 7. That wasn't important to Shikamaru. What he was wondering was why did Naruto have to make things harder for him. Shikamaru tried to pay full attention to the fight, he really did, but no matter what he found himself looking over at Team Kakashi at far too frequent intervals. He was trying to work out what Naruto was thinking, why he promised to help Shikamaru. He said it so naturally but seemed to also realize the weight of what he was saying. In many ways he had just promised to lay his life down for Shikamaru. Part of him wanted to tell Naruto that that wasn't necessary, or a safe promise. Another part, that he didn't know existed, wanted to take Naruto's word and hold him to it. Though it was probably not in the sense that Naruto intended. He gave a start when Naruto yelled. Once shooting him a look he leant against the wall, crossing his arms. Hey Sasuke you okay? The boy was half hanging over the railing, grinning. Hey Sasuke you won but in such an uncool way. The dark-haired boy was sitting on his behind, with his legs out in front of him and his sensei standing behind him. You came out looking like you were the one who got beat up. Ha! Idiot, give me a break. You little Sasuke retorted, panting, though not giving Naruto nearly as dark a look as Shikamaru expected. Oh well. Sasuke shocked those who knew him from the academy by smiling at the blonde, seeming to find his taunt amusing. Haha, I knew all the time that he would be okay, Eno gushed. This could be the end of the line for us, Shikamaru reasoned, noticing that the fight had actually been of high caliber and didn't last too long. He was good at a one-on-one -on -one fight, if he had time to plan it out. Unfortunately, he didn't know who his opponent was or their abilities. Luckily, they probably didn't know him either. Man, I'm hungry, Choji whined. Admittedly Shikamura found it funny that Kakashi-sensei seemed to treat Sasuke as a child. A disobedient one. He couldn't understand all of what they were saying but he did understand that Kakashi-sensei wouldn't take Sasuke arguing with him. All the fights were fairly intense, making Shikamura feel more and more disheartened. Naruto seemed to get more and more eager to have his turn. After the break they received to go to the bathroom and get something to eat, he noticed that Naruto had changed his attitude a little. Well, no matter who they pick it will be two widows cause this contest is chock full of them. He was frowning as he spoke and Shikamaru couldn't help but agree with him. The fights had all been unusual. Well, you're one to talk, Kakashi-sensei joked, his arms crossed. Yeah, good point, Sakura agreed. Hey, give me a break. Shikamaru tried not to laugh at the fact that Ino and Sakura were chosen. He heard Asuma-sensei gasp though he didn't know why the man was so surprised. He knew that his students would have to be chosen eventually. Or maybe it was that he had heard about Sakura from Ino, about how they had been friends for so long, only to become rivals over Sasuke. Looking at him Shikamaru saw Asuma-sensei watching Sakura and Ino walk down the stairs, glaring at each other. His dark eyes trailed over the last member of Team Kakashi before making eye contact with Shikamaru. That's Sakura? Asuma-sensei asked in an astounded voice. Yeah, Shikamaru confirmed with a shrug, his hands going to his pockets. His eyes slid back to the blonde. And who is that? He looked at Shikamaru, only to look back at the blonde, then Shikamaru again. Uzumaki, Naruto. The shocked look on his sensei's face made no sense to him. Why would a person's name cause such an expression? He didn't even know what emotions were flickering over his features. His eyes were wide, his smoke staying in his gaping mouth thanks to the dry saliva on his lip. Once again his eyes flickered from Shikamaru to Naruto, seeming to study the boy before he noticed he was staring. He closed his mouth and gave his head a slight shake, crossing his arms. Looking hard at the girls on the ground below, he acted as though nothing happened. Following his example Shikamaru looked down at the arena. For all the people for Ino to go up against it would have to be Sakura. What a mess. I know, I hope Ino will be okay, Choji muttered into his arms that were resting on the railing. Go, Sakura. You can do it. 
Naruto screamed, cupping his hands to get extra volume. Don't lose. The fight started and their moves seemed odd. They were holding back. Naruto didn't notice and became infuriated when Shikamaru called him a fool. He could really be an idiot and Shikamaru enjoyed reminding himself that he could beat Naruto in a verbal fight without effort. He could also beat him in a physical one too. The fight eventually escalated into a real fight, surprising them all. Unsurprisingly, the fight ended in a draw, both girls losing. Even though, the two girls certainly looked fine with the outcome, even happy to some extent. He was curious as to what happened to Ino's jutsu. That had never happened before. Ino had yelled something about two spirits, which was something Shikamaru had never heard about. He tried to ignore the fact that Sakura seemed to be able to do such at Naruto's words. The more Naruto had to wait the louder he got. Shikamaru filled his time with analyzing the fights, which seemed to confuse Naruto when he spoke out loud about his observations. The guy is such an idiot. His fight will probably be over within a minute. During his fight he could hear Naruto commenting, and not in a positive light. It pissed him off more than it should have, and he might have started showing off just a little. Not that Naruto noticed. Even a good-for-nothing lazy bum gets to win his match. When will I get my turn? Naruto whined as Shikamaru walked back up to the balcony. He tried not to sigh as he held back a flinch. It would be so much easier if he didn't care what the blonde thought, but he just couldn't seem to reach that point. It was simpler when he didn't know how he felt about Naruto. If he could go back to before that troublesome moment, he would do it without a second thought. Naruto started cheering, having been selected to fight against Kiba. Kiba sounded just as thrilled. Shikamaru didn't know why Naruto was so happy though. He really was going to be defeated by a puppy. He thought he was proven right when Naruto was knocked to the ground by an elbow to the gut from Kiba. Thought as much. He smirked, happy that he won his match and Naruto was taken out in seconds. I thought Kiba would be too much for him but that was fast, Ino admitted. He noticed that Sakura and Kakashi Sensei shared a look before Sakura gave a smile that seemed as though she knew the answers to some coveted secrets. Then Naruto got to his feet. Don't ever. Don't ever underestimate me. He couldn't help but smile. Ha, huh, the kids came a long way. Shikamaru could tell now that Naruto had taken the hit on purpose. The blonde admitted he wanted to judge Kiba's strength and taunted him, saying Akamaru would be a better fight. That's when he really was beaten by a puppy. Naruto was left in a heap on the ground when the smoke disappeared, Akamaru prancing back to Kiba smugly. Who would have thought a dog could look cocky? Only it wasn't Akamaru, it was Naruto, disguised as the white dog. I can't believe he bit Kiba, but how did he manage a transformation jutsu? He sucked at them. Wait. That shadow clone, it's holding Akamaru, which means it's not the type we learnt at the academy. They are only for distractions. His is solid, like Asuma Sensei's. How did he do that? Wow, Ino started, sounding a mix between shocked and impressed. Is that really Naruto? Who would have thought that Naruto would be a match for Kiba? To balance a transformation jutsu and a clone jutsu at the same time, there's no way he should be able to do that. He had no idea how Naruto had managed to learn that in the half a dozen months after four years of failure in the academy. I don't know what happened but this isn't the same Naruto we used to know. He didn't know how that sat with him. Now he couldn't tell who would win the fight, and admittedly he was intrigued. Part of him missed the old Naruto, partly because it was so easy to convince himself that there was nothing to like about the blonde. The new Naruto, he had potential, and Shikamaru found himself studying him closely. There were many times when everyone, Shikamaru especially, thought that Kiba had Naruto beat. Naruto's battle was definitely the most intense so far. But then Naruto had done something that no one saw coming. A double transformation. From Kiba to Akamaru confusing Kiba. Brilliant! That was the only word Shikamaru could think to call it. He greedily evaluated Naruto, trying to work out how he had come up with that move. The dark-haired boy wouldn't have thought of it, no matter how much time he had. Naruto had come up with it in seconds, whilst being beaten down by two spinning beasts with high chakra levels. He had studied his opponent, thinking of a way to create an opening, 
since he knew Kiba wouldn't give him one. He had succeeded in removing one of his enemies without having to even land a hit. Even Naruto's teammate had looked surprised. A smart shinobi is careful about how he uses his jutsu so it doesn't come back to bite him in the butt, dummy, Naruto pointed out, grinning and giving Kiba the thumbs down. He still hadn't thought Naruto could beat Kiba, yet he had, though how he eliminated Kiba's nose was, odd. His super secret, killer move was actually impressive. Shikamura didn't even know how to create one solid clone, let alone four. He wasn't so sure anymore if he could beat Naruto in a physical fight. At least he still had the verbal edge. Unbelievable. Who would have thought he would beat Kiba? Shikamaru couldn't help the smile that broke out. It was so impressive that he didn't even know where to start. He always was interesting to study. Chapter 4 The Blonde Is Asuma's POV Even though he should have been paying attention to his father, or his team, he couldn't help but study Naruto. The girl had some strength to her having made it through the second phase of the Chunin exams, but she was also easily forced into submission by Sasuke. He knew what their conversation was about. He had heard everything about the curse mark and Orochimaru sneaking into the exams. At least Naruto seemed to care about her teammates, even the blonde. The blonde seemed energetic and admittedly Asuma had written him off as an idiot until he had talked to Shikamaru. He had thanked Shikamaru for saving his team. It was a confusing interaction. At first Shikamaru appeared reluctant to look at the blonde and as though he wanted the conversation over with. But then it changed. The blonde promised to help Shikamaru, saying that he owed him one. Shikamaru had looked at the blonde in surprise, a number of emotions flickering across his face as he told the blonde he didn't have two. Yes, I do. You are annoying, and sleep most of the time and are so lazy that you can't even be bothered to argue about anything you care about, or be passionate about anything but no matter what, I've got your back whenever you need me. Asuma agreed with the boy's last comment. Shikamaru really needed to be passionate about something. As the blonde spoke Shikamaru had looked as though he wanted to contradict him, and by the end of it his mouth was hanging open. The rest of Team 9 had looked surprised at the blonde's words as well, though Asuma didn't see why they should be. Kakashi's student didn't seem affected by their expressions and instead gave Shikamaru a small smile before walking back to Naruto. Asuma was startled when he looked back at Shikamaru. The dark-haired boy was blushing. Maybe it was thinking about saving Naruto, Asuma thought as Naruto, and her team mate cheered on Sasuke. I'll have to learn that blonde's name. He turned back to his team just before the fight started. As Shikamaru stood next to him, leaning against the wall, Asuma alternated between watching the fight and watching Naruto and her teammate. The two were watching Sasuke intensely. However, Naruto looked enraptured whilst the blonde looked as though he was studying the fight closely. Asuma honestly wasn't sure how to move Naruto's feelings from Sasuke to Shikamaru, and the lazy boy wasn't helping. He hadn't said a word to the pink-haired girl, though Asuma did notice that he looked over at Kakashi's team often, blushing again at one point. When the blonde yelled at Sasuke, goading him to keep fighting, Shikamaru looked over sharply. He had looked over with surprise before glaring at Sasuke. He seemed to descend back into his own thoughts after a few minutes, or perhaps never truly surfaced. It was when Sasuke's fight ended that Shikamaru broke from his thoughts. He looked over at the two teammates, as the blonde spoke quietly to Naruto. The glare was back, though it was starting to seem as though it was an involuntary reaction. Looks like Shikamaru is the jealous type. Though I don't think Naruto has any romantic feelings for her blonde teammate, just Sasuke. The fights went on and Asuma noticed that Naruto wasn't as dumb as he expected after Kakashi's knucklehead comment. She actually seemed knowledgeable, explaining why the use of puppets was allowed in a one-on-one -on -one fight to her teammate, and occasionally making general comments about the fights. She didn't seem like a knucklehead at all. The blonde certainly did though. Shikamaru had came out of his stoic silence long enough to throw some snide or harsh remarks at the boy but he went silent again when they were given a ten-minute break. Choji walked over to the blonde, striking up a conversation about ramen, which the other ninja seemed to enjoy. Just as the last person stepped back into the room, though, the next match was chosen. Choji had returned to his team by this point, and the three males watched as the name of the final member of their team appeared. 
Ino was to verse her old rival Sakura. He had heard plenty about her from Ino, but he didn't think that she had made it to the Chunin exams. He really should have paid attention when the other Jonans were signing their students up, but Karinai's dress was tight. He looked over to the stairs where Ino was, watching her glare at Naruto as they walked down to the arena. He gasped. There was no way Kakashi would let someone fight when they weren't supposed to, at least not in this situation. But that would mean... His eyes drifted over to the blonde left standing next to Kakashi before he slowly pulled his gaze to meet Shikamaru's. The boy was looking at him in confusion. Asuma had no doubt he had a similar expression, though his was probably more intense. That's Sakura? Asuma asked in an astounded voice. The information was trickling into his mind. Yeah, Shikamaru confirmed with a shrug, his hands going to his pockets. His eyes slid back to the blonde. And who is that? He looked at Shikamaru, only to look back at the blonde, then Shikamaru again. Uzumaki, Naruto. Part of him knew that when the pink-haired girl walked down to fight Ino, but he had still had his doubts. His eyes widened, his jaw dropping. His cigarette only stayed in his mouth because of dry saliva gluing it to his lip. He looked from Shikamaru to the blonde, Naruto, thinking over what he had observed between the two. The blonde was a knucklehead, like Kakashi had said, and Shikamaru had seemed to like taunting him, drawing his attention. And the blush. The blush. Of course it now made sense. Naruto had been the one thanking him, and promising to fight for Shikamaru. Shikamaru had been blushing at the one in front of him, the one smiling at him. He had also glared at Sasuke when Naruto had yelled out to him, and Sakura when Naruto was talking to her. Wait. Naruto's a boy. Asuma scanned the blonde with his eyes. Yes, definitely a boy. Shikamaru is already sure of his sexuality. Does that normally happen so young? I have no clue. Well, the kid does have fire to him. He ISS strong, kind of like Shikamaru's mother, and won't let the lazy kid get away with slacking off. Well, maybe he would. It's hard to tell. But he's not very smart. When the blonde shot a look over his shoulder Asuma realized he was staring. He closed his mouth and gave his head a slight shake, crossing his arms. Looking hard at the girls on the ground below, he acted as though nothing had transpired. The last thing he wanted was for Shikamaru to get the wrong idea and think his sensei had a problem with Naruto. Shikamaru rested his arm on the railing. For all the people for Ino to go up against it would have to be Sakura. What a mess! I know, I hope Ino will be okay, Choji muttered into his arms that were resting on the railing. Go, Sakura. You can do it. Naruto screamed, cupping his hands to get extra volume. Don't lose. He's awfully loud. Asuma put Naruto out of his mind, focusing all his attention on his student. He was impressed with the fight, even though it ended in a draw. Ino had certainly improved in the time that she was in the forest of death. He noticed during Tenten and the San Genin's fight that when Shikamaru spoke disheartened about the fight that Naruto was the first to respond, spurring a little argument between them. He did notice how Shikamaru scoffed when Sakura assured Naruto that he could take the San Ninjas. Asuma couldn't help but notice the smirk he gave Naruto when Shikamaru's name was selected instead of the blondes. When Shikamaru gave a noise of pain and covered his ears Naruto looked concerned, gripping the railing a little tighter. Is he going to be okay? What's happening to him? My guess is that the bells are affecting his senses. They are putting him off balance and perhaps making him see double, or even triple. It is similar to a genjutsu, Kakashi explained calmly. Like the other guy from the sound, when he attacked Kabuto. He didn't touch him but Kabuto still threw up. Naruto pulled a disgusted look. Is Shikamaru going to throw up? That'll be embarrassing. He'll be fine, Asuma assured, watching Shikamaru. No doubt that the boy had already thought of something. He just wondered if the little genius had heard Naruto's words. It would be a shame if he didn't. When Shikamaru completed his fight Naruto looked impressed, but that was short-lived. He instantly started complaining that he hadn't had his turn, going so far as to insult Shikamaru. Even a good-for-nothing lazy bum gets to win his match. When will I get my turn? Shikamaru was walking up onto the balcony and even from a distance Asuma could see him flinch at Naruto's words. 
He looked down, watching his feet as he walked up to his team. It was only when Naruto started to cheer that he looked up. Naruto's fight against Kiba had certainly been interesting. It was obvious that everyone except for Naruto's teammates thought that Kiba was going to win. At first Asuma thought that Kakashi was being arrogant, thinking that Naruto had a chance, but then he noticed it. He noticed that Naruto was unpredictable. It was his biggest advantage. Kakashi had mentioned that you couldn't count Naruto out, and Asuma was starting to understand why. Although Asuma found the fight incredible to watch, he was also fascinated with watching Shikamaru's reactions. He had not looked away from the fight from the moment it started and had voiced his opinions a number of times. Shikamaru clearly thought Kiba would win without too much of a challenge, but he had been wrong. Asuma was fairly certain, thinking back, that Shikamaru had been able to predict the outcome of every battle so far after the first two moves. Perhaps that is Naruto's appeal. He can keep Shikamaru on his toes. Truthfully, he was beginning to wonder how no one else had noticed Shikamaru's infatuation. When Naruto performed a double transformation, surprising everyone, Shikamaru's face had filled with fascination and something akin to longing, though it had an odd spark to it. Asuma easily recognized it as the spark that appeared when Shikamaru came across a piece of information that he wanted to devour and claim for his own purposes. Brilliant! Shikamaru whispered, his eyes roaming over Naruto, studying the situation and Naruto's strategy. Well, that can't be good for Naruto. Asuma bit back his chuckle, wondering if Shikamaru was scheming to himself. Now that he knew the true identity of Naruto, he was beginning to wonder how he could have thought it was Sakura. He was starting to think Shikamaru might also be aware of his feelings, if the little things Asuma was picking up on were anything to go on. When the preliminary exams were over Asuma took his team out for barbecue, as he had promised Choji. Kakashi's team had run ahead, out the doors, making Kakashi sigh, though he made no move to keep up with them. The two spoke of ramen. His three students looked exhausted but happy to be getting a meal. It was clear that he would have to create a training schedule for Shikamaru otherwise the boy would sit around doing nothing for a month. Luckily, he knew something that should be able to motivate the boy— he just had to put it into practice without the boy realizing. They sat down in a booth and they ordered meat for them to barbecue. Once the meat started sizzling Asuma turned to his three students. I am very proud of all of you for how you handled the exams. But Choji and I lost our fights, Ino muttered, looking down at her plate. That doesn't matter. You both fought well and that is what matters. You can learn from how you went. Not only that, but there were many people older than you who did not even reach the second exam, or the preliminary exam. You should be proud. He smiled at them before putting some meat onto his plate to eat. It was perfectly cooked, since Choji was the one who looked after it. Thanks, Asuma-sensei, Choji said before digging into his meal. It's troublesome that I still have to fight. On top of that I have to fight an extra battle. What a drag. Shikamaru rested his chin on his palm sighing heavily. Hmm, that's true, but at least you will have more opportunity to impress those who will determine if you become a chunin. Though, you might have to be careful. I noticed that one kid was studying the fights closely. He was even asked questions when he didn't understand people's fighting techniques. What was his name? Asuma pretended to think, making sure he worded the rest of his speech correctly. Oh, Naruto from Kakashi's team. He was watching your fight very closely, Shikamaru. He was worried about you. And he's an unpredictable one so he might cause you problems. He hid his grin behind his napkin, pretending to wipe his mouth. Shikamaru's face was amusing. He tried to look uncaring, or bored, but the corner of his mouth twitched and his eyes looked awake, something they weren't moments before. Choji stopped devouring food long enough to shoot his friend a smile that went unnoticed by the dark-haired boy. It had worked. There was something there in Shikamaru's expression that showed determination. Asuma wondered if he would be able to play the Naruto card for a month or if it would wear off. Perhaps he would have to invite Naruto to one of their meals. Doesn't matter. If I end up fighting him I'll beat him. Besides, he might not get past Niji. Defeating Kiba is one thing but Niji was the top of his class and Naruto is an idiot. Shikamaru scoffed, putting a piece of food into his mouth and chewing slowly. 
Ino looked away from giving Choji a disgusted look long enough to contribute to the conversation. Naruto was actually impressive. I never thought I would say that but Naruto's fighting technique was smart. I would have fallen for it too. Yeah, I have to admit, I have no clue how he came up with that plan. I would have put money on Kiba winning but Naruto has really improved. Shikamaru gave a small smile. Wish I knew about that damn bridge though. Asuma laughed. Oh, I got Kakashi to tell me the story so I'll tell you if you train. Man, what a drag. I could just ask Naruto. You could, but he will probably be training too. Asuma helped Choji put more meat onto the barbecue as something Kakashi had said to him came to mind. You should be careful if you fight against Naruto. Apparently he has a large amount of chakra. Kakashi said that he was teaching the three of them a technique. Sasuke and Naruto trained for days straight but apparently Naruto trained at night too. I think Kakashi said he tallied it at three days a night. He said that the kid doesn't stop for anything. Kakashi isn't one to exaggerate so just watch yourself. When he says Naruto's chakra levels might be higher than his own, you know it's true. We are going to have to get your stamina up so that you can withstand multiple fights, but if Naruto really does have that much chakra I think you're going to have some trouble if you go up against him. The three genins look speechless, their mouths hanging open, eyes wide. Asuma could see some half-chewed barbecue sitting on one of Ino's back molars. Surprisingly it was Choji, who looked the most shocked, who recovered first. How is it possible for a genin to have so much chakra reserves? Choji squeaked. Come to think of it, Kiba took a food pill to heighten his chakra, but Naruto kept up with him and still had energy afterwards. Ino, you and Sakura passed out after your fight and I don't think you two used as much chakra as Naruto. He pulled off multiple jutsus, including one of Jonin level, and was still standing. He didn't even look that exhausted. After about two minutes his breathing had leveled back out. Shikamaru ignored the look that Ino shot him, clearly questioning how he had noticed so much. Asuma chose not to mention anything about how much Shikamaru had observed. He did notice that Choji had a small smile on his face as he grabbed some meat off of the barbecue. Honestly, he didn't know why that boy smiled at meat but then again his whole family were big eaters. You'll have to use your brain against him since I doubt you will be able to build enough stamina to keep up with Naruto in just a month. He didn't know why his words caused Shikamaru to blush but he was amused and proud of himself nonetheless. Chapter 5 Stamina Lapse That was one of the ways Asuma Sensei planned to enhance his stamina. With lapse, he hated this training. Truthfully, he didn't really care if he made Chunin. It wasn't like the rest of his team would be joining him at the new rank. And even if he participated in the last section of the exams, it didn't mean he would be made Chunin. He could fight the extra fight, defeat all the opponents put in front of him, and still not make Chunin. What a drag! To make matters worse, Asuma Sensei had gained Choji's help by offering to buy them barbecue after training, every day. If there was one way to get that guy to do what you want it was food. Unfortunately for Shikamaru, this resulted in his best friend pelting towards him in human boulder form, as Shikamaru kept doing his laps. He had to dodge or leap over Choji before continuing. Admittedly, he couldn't be mad at his friend though. Choji apologized whenever he actually managed to hit him, and he actually looked happy to be helping Shikamaru. Even though he had needed incentive to help train, he did want his friend to succeed. That was one of the few things that made Shikamaru continue with the training that his teacher was putting him through. His friends had wanted to make Chunin, something he had the opportunity to do whilst they had been knocked out of the running. He could grumble about it for days, but it would be unfair if he didn't at least try to become better for the final exam. At least he got barbecue each day to replenish his chakra levels. The bruising wasn't so easy to deal with. On top of that his sensei had started an unusual habit. Whenever Shikamaru started to look disheartened or started to complain he would start talking about the other combatants. He would talk about the different skills they had already witnessed, making sure to mention Naruto's unpredictability, his stamina, and the fact that everyone seemed to underestimate him. He honestly didn't know why Asuma sensei liked bringing up the blonde but he certainly did it a lot and for some reason Choji liked to join in with the conversation. The only good thing was that Shikamaru was learning quickly to control his blush. 
It had been two days since training started. Two days and he was already regretting making it into the finals. Hell, he was even starting to regret becoming a ninja. He rubbed the back of his neck, loosening the muscles, releasing a groan of pleasure at the relaxation it caused. With that simple action he felt tension leave him, making it easier for him to drown out the babbling of the two males beside him. He respected both of them but they had already gotten on his nerves. If he hadn't been focused so heavily on kneading out his muscles he may have heard his friends warning earlier, or have noticed the yellow and orange blur that barreled into him. The blur smashed against him hard, knocking the wind out of him and possibly bruising a rib or two. There was no doubt in his mind that his surprised expression was the furthest from cool. He flailed slightly as he fell backwards, one hand grabbing the small shoulder of the person tumbling with him as the other went to brace his fall. The sickening rush of air was stopped and replaced with the stomach-lunging feel of the ground against his back. Something pressed heavily against his chest, making his breath come short and difficult. It was warm, though, and smelt nice, really nice. It was soft, too, and damp. That last one was a little weird. He hadn't noticed until his hand had gone around the form, releasing their shoulder. Sorry, it said in a voice that did not sound apologetic at all. I know that voice, he thought as he groaned, the pain catching up to him. It was Naruto, and he was beginning to move. If Shikamaru had to guess, he would say that Naruto was trying to find his feet, to get up. He was doing a very poor job of it, and it was beginning to cause some problems. His dark eyes sprang open as he fully comprehended the tension in his abdomen. Within seconds he threw Naruto off of him with a feral snarl he didn't know he was capable of. He sat up, glaring at Naruto. The blonde half laid, half sat before him on the ground, propped up by his hands. He looked confused but far from scared. If anything he looked a little annoyed. I said sorry, he muttered. He rose to his feet, banging his hands on his pants to dust them off. Shikamura quickly rose to his feet too, noticing that Choji was looking at him in concern. He dusted himself much less violently than Naruto before addressing the blonde. His sensei looked far too amused to speak, which only annoyed the young genius even more. Naruto, what are you doing and why weren't you watching where you were going? I'm looking for the man who knocked out the closet pervert. I want him to train me. Have you seen him? Naruto rambled, seeming to vibrate out of his skin. Shikamura grabbed his shoulders to try and stop him from bouncing as he slowly processed the words that had been hurled at him. He heard a sumisensei mutter closet pervert to himself in confusion. He clearly wasn't used to Naruto coming up with unusual names for those around him. Naruto, how would we know if we've seen him? We don't know what he looks like. Oh, right. Naruto scratched his head. Well, he has really long, white hair, a toad, and oil on his head. Have you seen him? Shikamura looked at Choji, raising an eyebrow. He honestly wondered at times if Naruto was unhinged. When the three members of Team Ten shook their heads Naruto looked disappointed. The look was quickly replaced with a large grin. Then I'll just flood the village. Flood the village with what? Shikamaru asked slowly dropping his hands from Naruto's shoulders and putting them into his pockets. With me. Naruto brought his hands together before multiple shadow clones appeared. There were more than Shikamaru could count though he suspected that they reached close to a hundred. They quickly started fanning out down the streets and over the rooftops, looking for the mysterious man. Naruto looked unaffected, still grinning. If the pervert thinks he can knock out my new sensei and not have to train me in his place then he clearly doesn't know Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto ran off to join the search, leaving the stunned group behind. He really does have a ridiculous amount of chakra, Choji uttered in awe looking at the clouds of Naruto's off in the distance. He could beat me with sheer numbers alone. He was too shocked to say anything. He had seen how much Naruto had improved in his fight against Kiba, but there were no words for that. It was bad enough having one Naruto terrorizing the village. How were they meant to handle that many? Asuma-sensei recovered first, breaking Choji and Shikamaru out of their paralyzed states. He led them to the barbecue house, still looking highly amused much to Shikamaru's confusion and annoyance. He just focused on blocking out parts of that moment from his memory, otherwise his success with not blushing would be lost forever. 
a man with a toad, a sumo-sensei muttered to himself. It couldn't be the man I'm thinking of. Have you seen the man Naruto is looking for? Choji asked, looking up at his teacher. The older man shook his head. No, not seen, but I have heard of a man who fits that description. Even the oil on his head? Shikamura chuckled. Sort of. He has a head protector with the word oil. If it is who I think it is, then you might have a problem, Shikamaru. He's a powerful man. Let's hope I'm wrong. Asuma sensei slid into their usual booth, smiling in a way that made Shikamaru feel uncomfortable. Naruto really needs to watch where he's going though. I hope you didn't get hurt when Naruto landed on top of you. So much for being able to control his blush. Choji was training with his father leaving Shikamaru and Asuma-sensei to train just the two of them. Instead of exhausting the genin with exercises, Asuma-sensei had decided to drill Shikamaru on strategy. As the two walked around the river Shikamaru was to indicate each opponent's fighting style, any weaknesses and strengths he had observed, and how best to defeat them. This was something he didn't mind, especially because he knew for certain that this would be helpful for him during the match. After the first two matches he had no clue who he would be fighting, so he was to think of strategies for everyone. After just over a week of laps and other stamina-increasing activities this was enjoyable. Your first opponent is the man from the Sound Village. You saw him go up against Choji. He has that device on his arm that creates sound waves that affect the human body. Asuma-sensei put a cigarette in his lips, not lighting it, knowing Shikamaru would complain. Yeah. I've actually seen him fight a couple of times. He made this guy puke without touching him. I actually went up against him in the second exam too. Shikamura thought over what happened to Kabuto, and what he witnessed fighting him in the forest. I'm guessing the device has the ability to affect the inner ear. It might also be able to affect blood vessels and stuff if it hits the right frequency. However, the guy is violent, almost twisted, and doesn't like losing. He's lost to me so it won't be hard to make him lose his focus thanks to anger. His attack style also seems close to mid-range, which works to my advantage since that is also my range. Obviously everyone knows my jutsu now but as the day does on the arena will be more and more in my favor, so keeping a distance from me isn't going to help them much at all. Asuma-sensei nodded his head. Very good. What about your other main opponent, the girl from the sand? Shikamura thought for a moment. He didn't have as much information on her but her fight with Tenten had been rather telling. She's smart, calculating. Her jutsu could cause a problem for me. But she's cocky. I can use that to my advantage. She's more likely to leave an opening, because she thinks she's the smartest person in the room. I just have to find the opening, and use it. Should I worry about you having the same problem as her? Asuma-sensei seemed to half-joke. No, the moment I think I'm the smartest person is the moment I die, or someone I care about dies. All right, next, what about Niji Higaya? He's an entirely close-range attacker. His style works well for me. Bad for Naruto, though, who seems like he's also a close-range attacker. As long as he's not using shadow clones he will also fall into my jutsu. But I can't capture as many clones as he can make. Sasuke may cause me a problem since I know from the academy days how skilled he is. He has a range of attacks and is skilled with weapons. I won't be able to fully make a strategy until fighting him. No matter who wins out of Sasuke and that Gara guy they should have less chakra, so hopefully that'll help me. Seeing Gara go up against Lee I have no doubt that the fight will be intense so that should affect their chakra. You're right, Asuma-sensei commented. But, Naruto? I already did Naruto. Shikamaru frowned up at his sensei, only to notice that the man was staring ahead. Turning his gaze forward he found himself choking on his own saliva, his eyes bulging out of his head. What the hell? Oh, hey Shikamaru, Asuma-sensei, how's it going? Naruto grinned at them, seeming to not care that he was standing before them in nothing but a black shirt and green boxer shorts. Have you seen my pants? Shikamaru splattered at that his eyes roaming over Naruto's body, pausing on his shirt, which stuck to his oddly shaped chest before quickly being averted to look for the piece of clothing. He spotted them on a tree branch. Over there, how did they get up so high? 
Naruto shrugged as though it wasn't so unusual to have one's pants hanging from a tree branch. He walked up to the tree, reaching up as far as he could, but with little success. His fingertips just skimmed the fabric. With a huff, Naruto lowered himself back onto the flat of his feet before turning to Shikamaru. Could you help? I'm out of chakra and I'm too short. He finished in an annoyed mutter, crossing his arms over his chest. Sighing and uttering the words troublesome, he walked over to Naruto, pulling at the fabric and having it tumble from the tree, onto his head. This would be fine if something hard in Naruto's pocket hadn't hit him on the head. Ah, oh, what the hell hit me? Naruto took his pants off of Shikamaru's head as the dark-haired boy pressed his hand to a growing bruise, checking for blood. This. From his pocket he removed Gamachan, the wallet that Shikamaru had bought him years ago. Sorry, should have warned you that Gamachan was there. Shikamaru grunted as Naruto pulled the pants on. He found himself studying Naruto's form again, avoiding his legs until they were covered. He must be as flat-chested as Sakura. There was something there, some cushion, but it wasn't exactly feminine. It was oddly lumpy, but not masculine either. Realizing he was staring he quickly looked to the ground, moving back over to his teacher. What brings you here, Naruto, with your pants off? Asuma-sensei asked with a chuckle, smiling around his unlit smoke. Training on the river. That's why I didn't have my pants on. I didn't have a shirt too, but when I put it on it ended up wet anyway. Naruto sighed, pulling the fabric off his chest where it was clinging. Did you find the man you were looking for? Shikamaru had to remind himself to look at Naruto's face. Yeah, I had to use my sexy jutsu to con him into training me. He's currently over there, through the bushes doing research. Sexy jutsu? Don't ask, Asuma-sensei. What is he researching? Shikamaru was curious. If it was the man Asuma-sensei thought then he might have been making a powerful technique that he would teach Naruto. That would cause him problems. He's researching for his book, which means staring at women in bikinis. Naruto rolled his eyes. Stupid pervy sage. I don't start bad-mouthing my research, kid. Shikamaru jumped when he noticed a large, white-haired man crouching in the bushes not too far from them. He had a notebook open, a pen poised to write. The grin on his face made Shikamaru's skin crawl. He was looking between the dark-haired boy and Naruto eagerly. Shikamaru looked over at the blonde for answers but only saw Naruto frowning at his new sensei. Pervy Sage, what are you doing? Research. He wrote something down, his eyes gleaming as he looked at Shikamaru again, seeming to study him. I'm the author of the Aika Aika books. But the girls are over there. Naruto pointed in the direction that Pervy Sage's back was facing. Oh, I don't just watch bikini women for research. Though it is more entertaining than watching two prepubescent ninjas, but you are proving to be useful material. Naruto looked confused but Shikamaru understood what he was getting at. He didn't know much about the books but he had seen billboards about them. There was some kind of romance. Was he really that obvious? Or was it more the awkwardness of the situation that was inspiring the man before him? He was a very big man. Even crouching he was close to Shikamaru's height. He was also intimidating. There wasn't anything in particular that made Shikamaru want to back away, just something about the man. He seemed friendly enough, even a bit flaky, but there was a look in his eyes, something about how he held himself and something about the way he was toying with Shikamaru that made him know that the man could more than handle himself. Asuma-sensei cleared his throat, that damn amused expression back. This time it was also mixed with all. You're Jiraiya the Sanin, aren't you? I'm Asuma Saratobi. Jiraiya looked confused for a moment before grinning and standing up. Yep, he was tall, really tall. He was close to half a meter taller than Shikamaru. Yes, yes I am. It is nice to have someone actually call me by my name. He shot Naruto a dirty look. Whatever you say, you big pervert. I am a highly skilled ninja. He jabbed a thumb at his chest, grinning proudly before he got a creepy look on his face, wiggling his fingers as though he was groping something in the air. Being a pervert is just a bonus. Naruto looked at Shikamaru who hadn't noticed that Naruto had walked closer to him. See what I have to put up with. He turned to his sensei, 
his eyes near closed as he pointed at him accusingly. Stop perving on the girls and help me. It takes me hours to release all my chakra. You're meant to be so wise. How about thinking of a better way for me to build up the chakra I need other than summoning clones to fight and take up my chakra? Shikamaru cringed at the volume Naruto reached. None of it really made any sense to him. Why would you want to empty your chakra to train? He looked over at the white-haired man, expecting him to hit Naruto for such disrespect. Jiraiya did look annoyed. Jiraiya took a deep breath, making Shikamaru think he was trying to calm himself. He must have more patience than anyone in the world. It's not my fault you have ridiculous levels of chakra and stamina. If you could control it better then we wouldn't have this problem and you would have mastered the jutsu. Both Asuma-sensei and Shikamaru stepped back in shock, not expecting the response they saw. The two shared a look before backing away from the two loud mouths who continued to argue, firing insults at each other at a high volume. Once their voices had became distant echoes Shikamaru let out a breath. They're the same, he stated in surprise. They are exactly the same, just about forty years difference. That's a scary thought. Asuma-sensei let a breath rush out of his lips, his cigarette having fallen out of his mouth by the river. Who were we up to in the strategies? I don't remember.